Hey, Sean Foyt here. Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. We are live in Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. at Camp Allah. And I have been waiting for this. I'm so excited. I got my flannel shirt on, guys. We have the one and only representative from Montana and Congressman Rosendale. We are so excited to hear what God's doing in him, what's happening here in Capitol Hill. Of course, you know my love for Montana. I was born and raised there. I still claim it, by the way. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. Good to be here. Yeah. Uh, too hot for flannel. It's 90, <laughs> 90 plus out there, Bubba. That, it's too hot for I flannel. I'm, I'm trying to get into Montana uh, mountain vibes, uh, now, you know. Um, so yeah, we there's a lot to talk about. First of all, a little bit of your story. How did you get here? Who are you? Obviously, you're from Montana, so the audience loves you automatically. Yeah, yeah, and we know you as a fighter, but give us a little background. So I'm a businessman. I okay. began my career in real estate, brokerage development management, had a, a family business, built it up to a four office, 65 agent operation, turned my interest all over to my brother, moved out to my ranch in eastern Montana. It's about 20 miles north of Glendive, right on the Yellowstone River. Okay. A buddy of mine came out there and dropped off 200 pair of black Angus. And I spent my uh, first eight years riding horses, chasing cows around. And the only time I went to town was on Sundays to go to uh, mass with my wife and my children. I have three sons. Okay. Uh, we've been married, uh, my wife and I have been married just about 38 years now. And so um, we have our first grandchild. Second wow. one's due in August. Congratulations. Uh, once, once I was on the ranch, I really thought that that was my, the end of, of my public service. But the community quickly figured out that I had some additional skills that weren't being utilized. And I soon found myself as president of the Ag Association, president of the parish council. I am very active in the uh, church. And then they recruited me to run for the state legislature. And then, and then from there... Sean, it was really a, a fast track. I went mm -hmm. from the state legislature, from the House to the Senate. My peers elected me as a Senate Majority Leader. I was then elected as the Commissioner of Securities and Insurance. So it's a statewide position mm -hmm. in Montana. And then from there, I was elected to uh, the House of Representatives in 2020. At that time, I was the only representative for the state of Montana. Wow. The census has... Uh, obviously been uh, conducted and they awarded us with a second seat. So now I still represent about three quarters of the state, the Eastern okay. side of the state, okay. 41 counties. And, Is that uh, Billings over? Yeah, basically from Livingston. So okay. from, yeah, right. from, from Park County to the east, all the way over to the North Dakota border. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And, and so now I, I uh, serve in House of Representatives. I'm on the Veterans Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. I'm on the Natural Resources Committee. Both of them are critically important to our state. Mm -hmm. They're certainly important to our yeah. nation. Right. Um, I love my work. Yeah. I love my family. And yeah. I love the people that I represent. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, well, we, we love what a fighter you are. We love what a stick to your guns and, 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 and the integrity that you have. We're super grateful for that. I wanted to ask you something. Sure. America has been choked with these Canadian wildfires. Yes. I mean, it's insane. The last time I landed in DC, it was just like, and I live in California where we're used to that. I've never experienced smoke like I did when we landed in DC. Yeah. Like, and I, 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 I try to explain this, tell the folks out there how, why this originates, the mismanagement of forests. Give them a little bit of background that as is. Montana. So what has happened is, uh, if you go back about 20 years, okay, mm -hmm. and you look at the Forest Service yeah. and the amount of timber that they used to harvest, okay, it was tenfold more than what they're harvesting now. Right. Uh, and w when it comes to dollars and cents, um, basically they're generating about $150 million a year from timber harvest, right. yeah. where they used to generate, uh, adjusted for inflation, about $2.4 billion a year wow. from, from timber harvesting. And guess what? When they were harvesting all that timber, not only were they paying for their own operations because of the timber that they were harvesting, right. but they also kept the air cleaner. They kept the water right. quality cleaner. Yeah. They weren't spending their money on fighting these fires. Right. So they were generating revenue and keeping the environment healthier. Wow, what a concept. <laughs> what, what a concept. And, and so now, uh, we see what's what's taking place. If you take a state like Montana, perfect example, we have private lands, we have school trust lands, right. which the state owns, and then we have the Forest Service. You can fly over those areas and see that private lands are meticulously maintained exactly. and the timber is harvested. Exactly. The yeah. state school trust lands, the exact same thing. And yeah. then the federal lands, 
They are they are completely um, choked out. Uh, There's so additional true. fuel in there. So and then when a wildfire goes yeah. through, Sean, the shame of it is, is that it destroys habitat. Right. It destroys air quality, water yeah. quality for years, four years after that. So what, what people have been experiencing over the last few months, because it hit Washington, like I said, right. about a month and a half right. ago, um, is actually just a fraction of what we end up experiencing in the Western states on any given August. Right. I mean, right. we, we have a, a, a fire fund f at the state level for about $150 million, right. yeah. okay, to, to retain and, and contain uh, forest fires that basically end up originating nine times out of 10 on federal lands yes. and then to protect yeah. the, the state lands. Well, and that's the thing is I think, you know, the climate czars in Canada, they're supposed to be the ones that care about the, about the environment. And they're the ones like literally toxic air covering New York City, Philadelphia, DC. I mean, it's just like, it's kind of like crazy. You know, what just, I can't believe is that with all the talented attorneys that we have across this nation that are constantly filing lawsuits, okay? Uh, why somebody hasn't gotten together a class action lawsuit and said, you know something, by, by not managing these lands properly, you are ruining the health right. of, of the health yeah. and safety of the people located in Montana, right. in California, right. in Nevada, in, in these Western states that are experiencing this terrible, terrible destruction of air right. quality and yeah. water quality. And, and if that's the thing, I mean, private land people, like I, I own property in Montana and I actually have loggers coming this week. I mean, it's like, that's what you do is you thin it out. Sure. You get rid of the, of the fuel, you burn it in the fall and you clean up your place. And I think most people with land understand, it's like, it's like private land people know, know better than the government. <laughs> so, so Dwight Eisenhower said many years ago that farming looks very easy when you live a thousand miles away from a cornfield and you use a pencil for a plow. And, and that is the problem. We have yeah. too many people that are making these rules and regulations that are nowhere near uh, the, the land that they're going to impose it upon. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. Let's get into the gun store thing. So this was a big, big thing that came out. Uh, the gun grabbing, like what happened? Why is it a big deal? What are we doing about it? This is a classic example of the weaponization of our government, which is why the 118th Congress passed a, uh, a resolution to form a select committee on the weaponization right. of government. What we had was a fellow who has a, a gun store and shooting range in Great Falls, Montana, and he was raided about a month ago now. Um, Highwood Creek Outfitters. He was raided about a month ago with, met at his door when he was opening, 7 a.m., with 20 IRS agents fully fitted out with body Same. armor and ARs and one ATF agent. They came in, they searched his records, they basically closed his store down for the day, would not let his customers come in. It's all intimidation tactics. Right. These are Stalinist tactics is yeah. what they actually are. Yeah. Okay, and to chase the customers away, and for this this uh, store owner that he would dare that he would dare try to to push back against the the federal government. And what's really uh, upsetting is the IRS took that day boxes and boxes of forms, but they have no financial information on them whatsoever. They took thirteen Name the names. They took thirteen thousand. 4473 forms. The 4473 forms is the form that you fill out as a disclosure when you're going to purchase a firearm. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, the store owner is required to keep those records in perpetuity as long as they own that store. No one is supposed to have information, that information, except for the ATF. It doesn't have anything on it about the firearm you were going to purchase. It doesn't have anything on it about the value of that firearm. So there's no financial information on it whatsoever. And the IRS is not supposed to be able to take that information. And I am fighting with them now as we sit here to make sure that we return those records. 13,000 disclosures, private information about the citizens of Montana in the hands of the IRS. One has to believe that all they're doing is creating lists. And that's bothersome. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how how was that even? What like what was their reasoning to do that? Because they had ARs and full body armor and and why, and why does the IRS even have weapons? 
that which brings me to my next piece of legislation, which says that the IRS will not have weapons. And going forward, we're going to pull that out of their funding. And for the weapons that they currently have, uh, we propose that they, within 120 days, gather them all up and we have a public auction and uh, federal firearms license holders are able to come in there and purchase those weapons so that we get rid of them. And then all the ammunition that they have, we have another auction and private citizens are able to purchase that as well. I like that legislation. I like that a lot. <laughs> when is that coming down? That's a, we'll, we'll see if we can get it through that Senate side. Okay. So, Chair, for a minute, you were telling me a little bit. A lot of Americans don't understand what gets buried under a lot of these bills. Right. Right. I feel like you're... Uh, and I don't know if you like this comparison, but I feel like you're kind of like a hound dog, like you're finding stuff that yeah. other people have not found before. And this is so important. Like, I feel like we, we're, we're in a season where everything needs to be exposed. You know, what are some of the things that Americans might not understand get buried in these sure. giant bills? I mean, we we all see them, you know, on the news. They're walking into the chamber with this gargantuan bill. I'm like, there's no way they know what's in that before they vote on it. What are some of the things you found in it? So, uh, fortunately, I've been blessed with a good staff, okay, yeah. that helps me root some of these things out. But some of these things I've been following since I was in the state legislature back in the, the you know, 2013-15 uh, era. Um, there is a provision, for example, that was buried, wormholed into the National Defense Act uh, back in, I don't know, 2007, 2008, uh, which says that the United States military has the ability to pick you up as an American citizen, whisk you off to a foreign land, such as Guantanamo Bay, and detain you there for an unlimited amount of time without charges, without representation. President Obama recognized it was in there and wrote a letter and said, yeah, we probably should address this. I will never intend to use it, but it's in there. This is absolutely categorically in violation of, of the United States Constitution, right. the Bill of Rights, right. that th this is the kind of, of language that was inserted into our Declaration of Independence right. against the Crown. This is why we are leaving, because right. you're taking right. people from the United States yeah. back to England right. and charging them, keeping them detained yeah. without counsel. I mean, it, it, it literally is that basic. So we were able to get that inserted into the NDAA to remove right. that language. And that had bipartisan support because, yeah, there was a lot of of Democrats right. that didn't even realize that that language was in there. Well, I think I, I think it, it, it's alarming, but it's also, it, you know, of course, when we hit 2020 and there was this governmental overreach on levels we've never experienced before, I think what shocked me, and of course, we, you know, we, we, we led a movement that pushed back against a lot of it, especially on the religious liberties end. What shocked me, though, was that how many Americans were just complicit, like they weren't aware. Hold on one second. Like, like our constitution doesn't allow this. It doesn't, and, and they, they are not familiar with yeah. their own rights, unfortunately. And yeah. I can tell you that on more than one occasion, I told me, they said, how come you're not wearing a mask? How come you're not doing this? How come you're not doing that? I said, because the constitution does not give the, the government the ability yeah. to, to keep me from doing that. Do not consent. Yeah. Do not consent. Do not consent. What, 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 what is the thing though that, I mean, I mean, this is kind of what causes me to like, how can we, how can people wake up to those rights? Like, what do we need to do to shock people into saying, hold on a second, like you're surrendering one thing after another. And all of a sudden now we have this governmental overreach. I mean, we were just talking earlier to a guy that fled communism. I mean, we, pe people that, that, that fled that kind of stuff are the most sensitive to it, whereas normal Americans are just like, ah, they probably know what they're doing. I think that the entire uh, COVID pandemic really uh, enlightened a lot of folks. And right. uh, wait a minute, right? does the government truly have the authority right. to tell me what I right. need to insert into my body, right. how I need to uh, go out on the street, how I need to be able to practice or not practice right. my faith? And, right. and, and so uh, we have now seen a lot more people that are aware that their v rights have been violated and they need to stand up and fight back. Yeah. No, I mean, we, we do. I mean, and I think that, you know, even even as we approach 
things like these billions and billions of dollars going to Ukraine. Nobody knows what's happening. No. I mean, let's speak to that for a minute. What, what, what are yeah. your thoughts on where we are with that? So you can go back all the way to February 23rd of 22 when Russia first invaded Ukraine. And it was a, a completely unprovoked um, invasion of another country. There is no doubt about that. Um, however, um, I will tell you that leading up to that, I said the United States still does not have the the obligation to go in there and enter into this conflict. Right. This is the problem. We've inserted right. ourselves totally. into too many conflicts yes. around the globe. Yes. And then we continue to send armaments into Ukraine. I supported every resolution to put sanctions against Russia, to try and get them to remove themselves from this, this conflict. Right. Uh, again, an unprovoked conflict. But I do not believe that it was up to the United States to insert themselves so far into it. So far, uh, we know that there's been somewhere in the neighborhood of about $30 billion worth of weapons that have been sent there. And quite frankly, Sean, that's the only thing we have an accurate accounting of, right. are the weapons, and not even all of those. Uh, there's another $70 billion that's been sent in financial aid, and we're still waiting to get some type of an accurate audit on where those funds went to. I, I'm very, very concerned about that. Uh, we had an opportunity about seven months ago when the weapon systems on both sides uh, and the arsenals had been depleted to the point that they were having problems fighting with each other. Maybe that's not a bad thing. And, and so I was pushing, had many meetings with Senator Rand Paul. We were pushing at that point. Why don't we start forcing some conversations about uh, striking some kind of a peace accord, being as the weapon supplies are so low, diminished, that we saw this yeah. law in the fighting, instead of trying to spend our time and effort on rebuilding those weapons systems. Yeah. That, 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 that's, and, and I think that we may be approaching another opportunity uh, to do that again, um, as long as we don't continue to use our old, outdated weapons. Like, for example, they're now talking about releasing these these cluster bombs and, yeah. and Biden's releasing cluster bombs to be sent over to it's Ukraine insane. where they're not allowed to be used anywhere else. Right, right. And what if what what happens if, God forbid, Russia wins? I think that they need to have the people, the, the parties involved to come to the table yeah. and start having a conversation about some type of a peace accord. They, yeah. they really it's do. Stop. Because we're continuing stop. to destroy a nation. There's right. people dying. Right. There's people that are being forced out of their homes. And there's there's land that is being absolutely decimated that that feeds a lot of that that part of the world. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I, I think that. Um, this is my perspective that so many Americans, as I, as I travel, I've, I've gone to a lot of different cities, a lot of states, a lot of, a lot of different sentiments on this issue. I don't know that people even know what to believe anymore, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's the biggest issue is just like, you know, this, the corruption in Ukraine, obviously Russia's, you know, the craziness there. You have all, it's like, and, and that's my whole thing is like, the fighting just needs to stop. People need to stop dying. <laughs> right, we need to find a way to kill this, to, to end this thing. To end it. How do we, ha, what, what, what's your encouragement to Americans that are caught in that conflict? What, what, where do we stand? What do we believe? What, well, what, we, that, what they need to do is reach out to their representatives, their senators and, yeah. and their uh, House uh, representatives members and say, please uh, urge the administration to uh, urge the parties to come together to, uh, to sit down and have talks yeah. and try to strike a peace agreement. That's what we need to do. Everybody needs to be pushing more effort towards that. Yeah, and we need to pray. We need we need peace for sure. I mean, I have both great Russian friends and great Ukrainian friends, and both of them on both sides want peace. I think right. that's that's a that's a full agreement from both of them. Um, I, I want to talk for a minute about like this national kind of like your place in the House. Obviously, we know the Senate is <clears throat> you know blocking a lot of stuff. <laughs> And, you know, kind of stalemate the House. You guys, I, I would say your primary role right now would just be to uncover things. Right. I mean, you know, like what, share so, with so, everybody so, out there a little bit of how that works, where we're at yeah. right so now. So whether we're talking about the, the uh, Select Committee for the Weaponization of right. Government or the Select Committee on Chinese Activities right. or, or just general oversight of government, right. Congress' role is to uh, investigate Right. and to 
provide this transparency. Right. Uh, but, but, but Congress does not charge and prosecute. Right. The Department of Justice does that. Right. The problem we have right now is, quite frankly, the cancer that is within our Department right. of Justice, that they have not demonstrated right. the desire nor the ability to charge and prosecute what most people would consider to be blatant crimes. Right. That is a problem. When you have FISA yeah. courts that have been so abused, to me, uh, it is exhibit A of why right. we shouldn't have FISA courts. Okay? Well, and I, when, and, and I think it's, deflate, it's deflating for people. I'm speaking this from, from, from my view. When you're seeing all this, right, you're seeing this, this purge to try to get accountability, CIA, FBI, uh, all these different organizations, and that yet you're in these hearings, you're, people are lying. Right. It's obvious. And yet there's no repercussions. Right. And they just kind of carry on. So it, then it brings you to the point, well, what's the point in all this? So, well, well, and then what people say is, okay, well, the only, the only tool, okay, that is available to Congress is to defund a lot of these activities. Right. And everybody says, well, Congress has the purse strings. That's true. And, but basically, they originate in Congress. So regardless right. of what we do, so we'll be developing the 12 appropriation bills. So right. you've got 12 bills that actually fund all of government. Right. And they're broken down to different sections. And they're being developed right now. And once those are passed, they will be sent over to our friends in the Senate. The problem is Republicans are in the minority in the Senate. Right. Right. And the Democrats' goals and objectives and and mission are a lot different than what we want to achieve. And so they can stop those appropriation bills from going forward. And certainly the White House doesn't have the same right. goals and objectives that we Obviously. do. So while we originate the purse strings, if you will, we don't have the final say on those. And so we saw the exact same thing happen earlier this year where a lot of us spent a lot of time and effort developing a really comprehensive debt ceiling package right. to not only change the trajectory of our spending, okay, and back it off, freeze the spending level, claw back a lot of the money that had not been spent mm -hmm. uh, through different crazy programs that the Biden administration had proposed um, and to, to pass the energy package to help the economy to actually grow. We spent a lot of time on that, okay, right. and passed that with 218 Republican votes. It went over to the Senate. Not only did it not die, it, it never even was considered. And, and, and so, unfortunately, we were completely undermined because the, the speaker and the right. president struck their own deal, right. which extended the debt ceiling out to January yeah. of 25. And so now we sort of have lost one of those leverage points that we need, okay? Whenever you're yeah. in a negotiation, you have to have something that that gives you the, right, a little yeah. bit of a, you know, it's like when you're playing cards, unfortunately. Yeah. They have to wonder exactly what you're holding. Right. But they know what we're holding now. Not not a lot because the debt ceiling has been increased now through January right, 25. Right. And, and so we're gonna struggle. So what would be the primary focus then of the House and what you guys are doing? What would be the, the, the goal or the agenda? So, so we're exposing all of these problems, okay. okay? And that's through the select committees. We absolutely are exposing that. What we're going to do is propose our appropriations package, which will not only include these funding um, um, options, but also we will attach our policy priorities to that as well, securing the southern border. Mm -hmm increasing our domestic energy yeah. production, okay? Those types of things and attach that to the appropriations package so that the American people can see that we do have a plan and, and if allowed to implement it, it will be good for our country. Right. And then we have to see what the, what the Senate's gonna do with it. They need some support over there. Yeah. Well, again, the Republicans are in the minority and some of the Republicans that are, that are in there are not the strongest. In yeah, the squishy. Uh, one of the things this is just a personal request, is how can we get grizzly bears off the list in Montana? Okay. Dear God, please. I yeah. mean, I am getting sent pictures of grizzly bears in my friends' backyards all over Montana. I mean, it's insane. It is, it is. So I, I don't think people understand, like, you know, when they were introduced in Yellowstone, um, you know, I, my, my place is up towards Glacier. They're everywhere. Everywhere. The... And they're not afraid of, of people. That's Adam. because that's because they don't need to be. Right. Okay, here here's the problem. When you have a a, uh, a predator like that that never gets molested by by something, pick pick the you know pick the thing, then 
they don't have any fear. They have no no reason to yeah. fear anything. I just had a uh, a video last week of four bears running through Alm. It's a community a long ways from the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. And they have they have traveled, expanded east the range of, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. East east of the Rocky Mountains. So I've introduced legislation to delist the grizzly bears based upon the fact that they are 200, 300 percent beyond their target populations yeah. in order to do that. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the misconception, again, that people have that aren't on the land is that that means, oh my gosh, that means that you are allowed to hunt and shoot every grizzly bear that is out oh, there. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. What that means is the management of this population yeah. is going to be handled by the state Fish, Wildlife, and Parks instead right. of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Right. And what we're going to do is make sure that we manage those populations in a, a number that is sustainable right. for a healthy, healthy right. population, but that we don't have all these human and bear conflicts taking right. place. Once you start giving them some ability to hunt, the folks right. that live there, what happens is the bears start staying away from those right. areas. They're right. going to retreat back to their, oh, yeah. I mean, to their like, original It's like the bears in Alaska. Habitat. I mean, when you, when you go moose hunting in Alaska, which I've been many times, grizzly bears, they don't want to see you. Right. They run. I mean, right. they see a human, they run the other way, and that's the way it should be. Right. Unfortunately, I mean, you know, when you're hiking in Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, whatever, now you can carry a gun. Thank God. Sure. Now you can. It wasn't like that when I was growing up. Now you can, and I always bring one with me along with bear spray. But those encounters are not often pleasant, you no. know, because the bears are not they have no fear. There's far too many examples that you can go out on YouTube and find right. of human and bear conflicts with people that have been mauled. I mean, it's 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 yeah. terrible. We just had a woman what about two years ago uh, that was killed between between Helena and Missoula and the Flathead back over right. in that area and Ovando. Yeah, yeah. She so, was dragged out of a tent. Yeah. Grizzly bear took her, killed her. I mean, you, you, when you start having conflicts like that, and, and the school systems for the elementary school and the middle school system or what we call the front range, okay? They're so running for, through the playground. They had, they've had to start insane. putting high, fen high fence up to keep the bears out. That is insane. To protect the children. That's insane. And, you know, I mean, a lot of these ranchers, these Montana guys, they're not going to stand for that. No. So we got to... You know, I appreciate you working on that. Last thing I want to talk to you about, I want to get your thoughts on the trans agenda is out of control. Absolutely. Okay. Americans know that. Like even even for e e like even like nominal people have been red pilled through the intensity of the trans agenda. Where do you see things landing right now, even as we approach some of these elections coming up next year and that issue primarily? I think that there's a lot of businesses, let me start there first, that have made some very, very um, bad decisions about trying to accommodate They're being the bud, world policies. Bud lighted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> whoever came up with that marketing plan, I'm sure oh, is fired. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> is fired. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just, but even it's the target, yeah. even the Target boycott. I mean, if people didn't think that would stick. And my wife just texted me yesterday. She's like, "Can we shop at Target again yet?" And I'm like, "No." Yeah. You so, know, because Americans are fed up, and you're seeing 50 billion. 55 billion, whatever Swings losses. Swings in value. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing is that this is, again, something that we did through the National Defense Act. Right. So the National Defense Act, our United States military has been used as a social experiment for the last two decades. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, through executive orders and, and decisions, uh, the administrations have allowed taxpayer dollars to be used yeah. for transgender surgeries. Yeah. I uh, submitted an amendment and it was passed overwhelmingly to pull that out. Taxpayers dollars can't be used for transgender surgeries or treatment for our service members. Yeah. Go figure. I said on the House floor very clearly, if you don't know, if you're a man or a woman, your hand should not be on the button that's going to launch missiles. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. It, it's pretty simple stuff. But yeah. they also shouldn't be used for abortion services. Right. So we remove right. that. We, right. we can allow the American taxpayers' dollars right. to be used yeah. to push these this this big social yeah. agenda that the right. left is is trying to impose upon us. Well, and politics is always downstream culture, and now you're seeing culture respond, especially in June this last month, was very clear on on Bud Light, on Target, on the Dodgers. I was in the mix of that whole thing. I released a statement by my friend who was a pitcher, 
Uh -huh. And he didn't have social media. I released it. It got millions of views. And he was like, I, I, I stand against this. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. All this kind of stuff, right? Exactly. May, like, Americans, not just Christians, not just even believers that are watching this, but Americans are wholesale rejecting it. How do we gut this stuff? From people, that's integrated uh, into I'm the government. I'm telling you, Sean, people cannot be intimidated. There's a small yeah. group of individuals that are trying to push this agenda. I completely am convinced that this is nothing more than a Marxist agenda. They're trying to destroy our families. Yeah. They're trying to keep us yeah. from practicing our faith, and they're trying to brainwash our children. And if you do those three things, America will cease to exist. And if America ceases to exist, then the entire earth is going to have problems. Come on, we need people to rise up and hold the line. That's exactly right. That's what we need. Last last question. Last question, because I know you got a busy day. I'm so grateful for this. I want to know how somebody like Tester survives in Montana, who's a Democrat senator. Tell people out there, because they don't understand. Like, this is, I hear it all over the place Lies. when I travel. It's real simple. It's just lies. Yeah. Uh, John Tester wears a Carhartt jacket and goes around the state of Montana and acts like he's just a moderate, regular guy like you and me and everybody else. And the fact of the matter is that people haven't looked close enough to see that his votes are completely contrary to that once he arrives in Washington, D.C. So he's been here for 17 years. Maybe his votes were a little bit more moderate when he first arrived. But yeah. I will tell you, now they are not. When, you, when you're talking to... Uh, the Senate members about trying to get somebody from the Democrat side yeah. to help them to pay us something, a more moderate individual. Yeah. John Tester's name is never mentioned. And, yeah. and, and finally, we're glad to see, uh, we've been doing polling to see what's going on. 60% right, right. Uh, of the people across the state of Montana finally recognize John as a liberal. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's you, you can't hook your train to Biden's extreme leftist, psychotic Marxist agenda and feel like you can represent the people of Montana. Correct. I mean, and so do you think it, do you think it's that Dem cowboy thing that was kind of around in the 90s, early 2000s, but now it's like, that's not a thing anymore? I think that the, the, the Democrat party has gone so far away right, from right, their very right, poor. Totally. I mean, uh, how many yeah. times do we all hear the, the conversation about Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan used to sit around and have a glass of bourbon at the end of the day and discuss issues together right. and they'd be okay on it. Yeah. Well, guess what? That's because they were talking about, yeah. are we going to buy 750 tanks or 1,000 tanks? They were not talking about, are we going to pay for transgender surgery yeah, exactly. or, and abortions exactly. or not? So yeah. the conversations right. were completely 100%. different. And, and, yeah. and John has now again, has gone so far to the left that the people across the state, they will not put him back in again to represent yeah. them. I'm convinced of that. Well, we want to stand with you. We want to stand for Montana. We, I, I love the state. We're praying for you and your team and on your you. fight in Congress. And thank you so much for being a bold voice. Thanks for coming on here. I appreciate the time. Thank together. you, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate God it. Bless.